Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, hello. Good afternoon. Let's start na, guys. Um, kay ang atong time sa ato ang uh, what you call this? Sa ato ang um, sa ato ang um, Zoom meeting is only 40 minutes. So we have to um have at least kung we have to redo or enter the Zoom meeting then pwede ra siya. So good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to my channel. How are you to find out? <laughs> Welcome to um another workshop. Actually, this will be the last workshop that we will be having for our, our subject campus journalism. So um this will be a very uh short I suppose uh, lecture workshop because uh, the thing that would make it probably long is because of the examples that I will be showing you guys. So for today's uh, workshop, we are going to have, or we are going to talk about photojournalism, how to take good photos, and at the same time, how to do photo captioning. So we will be tackling more on that today. And by the end of this uh, lecture workshop, you will be assigned to an activity of which you have to conduct individually. So individual lang sa tarong ngatikoan activity. So uh, for those who came in late and was not able to do the attendance, please write your complete name to chat box that will serve as your attendance for today's virtual meeting. So let's start right away. I will, I will be sharing to you guys my share screen. Okay, let me see my share screen, my PowerPoint rather. Can you see it? No. Can you see that one? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, wait lang ha. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So let me try to go over this one right here. Just like a log show. Okay. So again, today we are going to have photojournalism workshop. And, 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 wait long step B. Oh, good long, good long guy. Something wrong with my, I know. Okay, let's see. Let me go back. Okay, let me share my screen again. This one right here. Okay, can you see it now? My PowerPoint for today. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me see. Okay. How about that one? Did something change? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What happened? Is it on, on uh, presenter's view? Yes. Yes, no. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Asin siya yung kinag-tinigulang inyong maestro. Wala siya kabaloon siya buhaton. Sige, let's go back here. All right, so uh, today we are going to have photojournalism workshop. And let's start first by uh, defining a little bit about um, photojournalism. So photojournalism is an art and science of taking pictures for publication in newspapers and other periodicals. So it's somewhat similar to uh, basic or regular photography, only that it has its purpose. It should be able to further elaborate or tell more about the story that is being written in an article or in a publication. So uh, it's about capturing the human experience and making your own art, not just capturing the creations of others. So it's trying to look at good, bad, and the ugly. So it's also about communicating with pictures. 
Okay, so if you see uh, in these examples, please take a look in, in the examples photos rather, please take a look at the captions below each uh, like this one uh, trail what's that trail going to the summit of Mount Pulag because that will be very helpful later on in the photo captioning part of our uh, lecture workshop. Okay, and that, then we have um, photojournalist sim as reporting of a wide range of subjects and events of public interest, usually for newspapers, magazine, and through photographs. So uh, it's not necessarily, or photojournalism does not solely, solely rely on news articles, but it could also be a travel, travel news, travel article, feature article, sports article, etc. Okay. So this example picture right here is raft riding going to Ambon, Ambon Falls, Pangil River. And then we also have here another example. Okay, it's about human interest. And we have here classification of photos. So the first kind of photography is about news photography to record the external world as it appears. Like for example, in this picture, in this example, this is from the Burnham Park in Baguio City. Uh, taken last 2012. So it pro it's probably about uh, how uh, tourists flock the area during, uh, it's probably summer because um, although it's sunny there, it's probably cold because of the weather in Baguio. So that's probably a news photography. Then we have documentary photography, which is used for expressive interpretative purpose as in this one right here, like how are they uh, documenting the tuna, Tuna industry in Jensen City or General Santos City Pierre. And we also have her commercial photography, which is used to advertise, like for example, this one right here. And for news photography, we have different kinds and various kinds as well. The first one is spot. This refers to breaking news event and expected rapidly changing newsworthy event of limited duration. Like for example, when the uh, eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991. This picture is an example of a spot photo. At the exact moment, unexpected Russia headline, headlining up photography Shaba. Then we also have here this one and this one also, another example. And another kind of news photography is general. This refers to newsworthy events and subjects that are planned, expected, or predictable. Like, for example, if you're going to participate or you're going to document um, a festival, for example, Panagbenga, or for example, the Yandi, those are four general types of news photography, as well as this one, NSPC 2013 opening or Mok City. And then we also have here sports. So, okay, so it covers the wide range of subject, including team, individual, competitive, and personal sports. So if you notice, um, we will focus uh, later on sports uh, photography. Then this one right here also. And another kind of news photography is feature, which is a photo that is unbound by time, sometimes called evergreen because it does not fade with season but remains fresh. So it's like it features an object or especially um, um, the environment. It shows the beauty of something. And then we also have your picture story. So this is like a collage or a series of photos or a set of images that work together to tell a story or explore a subject. So sometimes this tell a sequence of events represent various aspects of subject unrelated in time, but connected in underlying theme of or subject. Then we also have here documentary photography. So these are photographs taken to vividly co and concretely and dramatically record events and people for the study of history, science and technology or any other matter of human interest. For example, in this picture, this is a fossil, a picture of a fossil taken from Sumagin Cave. I think this is here in the Philippines. And we also have here uh, a lumpia, how to make a lumpia from Ilocasur. Wow, that's delicious. And we also have here uh, commercial photography. This is used to encourage and direct consumerism and use in advertisements and illustration in books, magazine, and other publication. Like for example, uh, this is a photo taken from a uh, Sagada weaver or a weaver from the Sagada, of course. And we also have here, <clears throat> 
um, discussion or uh, explanation or discussion of how to take a good picture. So we have two aspects to consider in taking a good picture, the technical aspect and the editorial aspect. So we will go hand in hand with them uh, in the following slides. So first we go with the technical aspect. So photo is perfect, free from smudges and is clear for publication like this one right here. Like um, it follows technical aspects like uh, rule of thirds, like the lighting and so on. And aperture control. So this is for um, in case you are have you have a DSLR or a uh, high edge camera. Uh, this one is should be for another for another specific and focused topic. But for now, since we are on the 21st century, we are bound or we are actually able to take pictures using just our mobile phones or anything that captures um, a picture aside from <clears throat> DSLR or high edge cameras. We also have here a discussion of shutter speed. So this affects how blurry, how blurry a picture could be. So this one's as I mentioned for another specific, if you want to pursue photojournalism or photography, then you should be able to uh, know this basic stuff. And depth of uh, depth of field means to say how an object is um, kanang ang illustration niya ba is layo siya or near in the uh, in the in the picture or in the center of the picture like for example in picture number one here the center or the subject of the photo is blurry while the the background one the background the picture in the background is the one that is most likely um highlighted because of this aperture and depth field settings in their camera so for the editorial aspect we have here composition which is the arrangement of subjects or subject so uh, in instances like spot um, spot photography, this would probably not be achievable all the time. But for, for example, a commercial and for general photography, then you will definitely can do composition or can control the composition of the subject or the object in your um, photo or your photograph. We also have here this one. And there are three kinds of angles of view. Uh, in taking a photo. So to achieve composition, consider the following. So we have here, kanang gikan siya sa taas, that's bird's eye view, kanang sa ubos, worm's eye view, or worm's view, eye view na siya for some, and then we have here, of course, the normal view, kanang third na picture. So this is an example of bird's view. So if you want to take picture of katong mga koi fish dara sa kanal sa my mall, this is probably the most fitting uh, view, angles view that you are going to take, bird's view or bird's eye view. Normal view mean to say, um, Ang imuhang, uh, sita wagani. Ang height sa imuhang camera ug sa imuhang subject are the same height. And we also have your worm's eye view. For example, kan ang mga hilig hilig ng mga pictures sa taas taas, hangad hangad. Okay. Then we also have here, um, considerations to achieve composition. So there are three subject distances. Uh, first is long shot. Uh, kaning 15 feet ang away ang subject. Medium shot kan ang, uh, Okay, okay lang siya. Kanang warag. Half of the body is seen and then close-up shot, of course. Um, that is a shoulder up. So you have to remember that long shot means whole body. Medium shot is from waist up. And then uh, close-up shot is from shoulder or neck upwards. So that's the kind of uh, distances that you can consider with your subject. For example, this one. Bati kayo head there, no? So, long shot na siya, guys. Long shot. <laughs> okay, so this is a photo of Anglican Church, Sagada Mount Province. So it means to say that you can see the whole church, okay, the whole uh, structure of the church or the subject of your photo. Then we have here a medium shot, which is, um, although it they can, you can see the whole body of the subjects, it's, it's, kanang, it, it's taken into consideration that they did not include the whole layout of the church inside. And then close up shot, of course, this one, 
or kanang one by one or kanang selfie. Those are examples of close up shots. And then we have here for another editorial aspect, lighting. Lighting is very important, especially if mag selfie ka. So we know about that, especially when we take selfies. Lighting, uh, it's, much, it's, uh, it's much more effective to use lighting to highlight the subject. Okay. And then this one right here too. So the subject probably of this picture is the um, kanang lamps that's made of uh, wood. And I think that's made of bamboos as well. Another is exposure. So exposure refers to the kanabitong kahaya. Dili siya lighting. Exposure kanang uh, kanang kahayag sa overall nga kuan ba nga picture. Like for example, this one. This is not too uh, exposed or wala ka siya exposure. And at the same time, this one kanang uh, na highlight ang ang colors o overall picture because of the lighting. And then other important composition rules, there should be one center of interest, and that is the subject of your photograph. Avoid always locating the center of interest at the center. So for example, please avo avoid taking pictures like this. Ta-da! Okay, because you're like, Monisha, guys. Kita you guys. This is the ano, ano, something like that. So um, if you want to be included in... Um, and a uh, picture showing a scenery or showing something, then you should be included as a subject of the photo. And you should also be the center and not necessarily pointing to the center of the interest in your photo. Like this one here. And action should move into the picture, not out of it. So uh, if you want to have action in your photograph, like in this example, it should be that the action is moving towards the picture, not going outwards. For example, if if uh, imagine if the arrow is going outwards to the to the what's that to the to the right side of your screen, so that would probably be a no no. So it should be going inside or into the picture, not going out. And then we have here horizontal line depicts calmness and peacefulness. And sometimes it's also followed the rule of thirds. So we will talk about rule of thirds later. And vertical lines show power and stability. So this one goes to um, having arch arch uh, structures and architectural designs as your subject of the photo. Then diagonal lines depict motion and uh, dynamism. So, for example, in this picture, as you can see, um, kanabitong bangka. If you notice, nag ano siya, nag nag slant siya sa corner, sa corner sa photo, and then let me let me write this one here. Pen, pen, pen. This one. If you notice, it follows a diagonal line at it. It usually defect, depict, depicts rather motion and sometimes follow a certain and important part in um, in, in photojournalism. Next, let's have here. Uh, use contrast to heighten the interest. So you can use contrast of colors, like for example, green, this one's. Uh, black and white and so on, light and day. So those are very good examples. Uh, this one too, uh, is, if you notice, ang background niya is uh, dark here. And then the foreground here is much lighter. Then we also have here six basic errors in picture taking. Slopping, vertical, hiwi siya dear. Pakiayos ko, ano siya? No? So we have to avoid strong vertical lines because they call for careful framing so that they remain parallel to the edges of the frame and thus appear to be upright. So supposedly, there na siya, ana. Ana na siya, ana na siya. So supposedly, ganun siya. Okay, so you should follow uh, horizontal and diagonal lines and uh, vertical lines. Slopping horizon, ka na siya. Oh, makairita ka na siya sa imuhang kuan cover photo. That's not, that's a no-no. Okay, so, such as waterfront above or horizon should be framed to run parallel to the top of your viewfinder. And then, head cut off, ka nagiputol imong ulo. No, that's a very big no-no, especially if you're doing close-up like this one. No, it's very butty. And then, Object obscuring lens. For example, kanisha, pag take a picture, something is blocking 
uh, the lens. For example, poop baka nisa sa bird nga accidentally napunta dira or something like that. So that's a big no-no. So you should take care of your camera strap or fingers. That's not obscure, obscure the lens, especially on non-reflex cameras where you cannot see this in frame. Or kana bang dili ni mo siya ma review ang uh, unlike sa mga mobile phones karon or mga bagong digital cam nga naay makita ni mo ma review ni mo ang pictures DSLR or high end cameras do not have a kanang reflex cameras kana makita ni mo siya ba And then confusing background like for example uh unsa man ihang do sa picture run with the, the car, the globe, or the whole one, something like that. So these are also tips on how to take your cover photos uh, well. No? And number six, subject too close. So if your subject is too close, probably it will be blurred. So it should be ha or it should have um, a, cl uh, a normal distance. Kung close up siya, dapat clear po siya sa, sa picture. So with a fixed focus camera, especially if you have a fixed focus camera, do not take subjects closer than the minimum focus distance about six feet or two meters. Then we have other ways to take better, better fo photographs. We have natural frames like this one here. This one is a good example. Uh, this one too. Right here, you can see a very natural frame right there. This one too. This follows a diagonal line right here. If you notice, no, and then the frame, of course, this one. And then we have here create balance and harmony, like this one. Uh, half of the most half of the pictures are land based, and the other one is an ocean, blue, and sky. So those are very good examples of balance and harmony. Okay, then we have here Shulik Sholik Mom. We also have here uh, this one too. Okay, this shows, um, you know. Uh, the regular things that campers do, and then there is a frame here of green things, or yeah. And then we also have here use shadows of subjects, like this one. And then um, photo photograph interior, as in this one. This is, uh, if you remember, this is from Worms Eye View. Expose for happy colors like this one. So high exposure means mas ma light, mo brighten ang colors sa muhang subjects or sa muhang, um, picture. Like this one too, here. And then create mood with colors. So colors affect the, the viewer's uh, mood and at the same time, opinion of your photograph. So this one here, if you see these colors, especially if you've grown to this image, you probably feel happy. Like this one too. And photographs flowers in close up. So if you want to take pictures of flowers, then take them in close up. Okay, of course, try to have the subject, the flower as your subject. And then shoot above your model's eye, like this one. So naghangad sila sa photographer. And then photograph people at work. So sometimes you have to photograph kanang candid siya. Dili siya kanang scripted ba? Ma, nay, post, good nay. Ana, dili siya yung na. So if you want to, if, especially if you want to include it in a, on an, if you want to have it as a picture of your article, it should be candid and not scripted. Like this one here. And shoot this one. Shoot candid portraits. Photograph from natural form, like this one here. Use the sky as a background. Okay, this one is very important, especially if uh, you have contrasting colors with uh, the subject and the background, which is the sky that's very perfect. Like this one too. Look for patterns. So if, especially if you're a very kanang, uh, photographer or you're fond of photography, and you want patterns, see what your kanang OC kasatanan din. Patterns would very be much perfect for you. Like this one here, there's patterns, this one too, this one, and so on. Like this one too. Focus on architectural designs, okay? So focus on the intricate details of the architectural design, not really the uh, not really the specific. Uh, kung sa flowers, you have to focus on the flowers here in architectural design. Focus on the details of the overall structure. This one here, 
and look for different angles. So it's either you go bird's eye view or worm's eye view, whatever, or whichever um, angle view is perfect for that scene. Like example, this one, scene urchin picker, Samal Island, Davao del Norte. And this one, this is worm's eye view. And here, shoot evocative details like this one. And this one too, photograph reflection. So uh, puddles and waters are very good um, reflectors for natural phot photographs. This one here, this, are, this is a puddle and this is a very good example of showing reflections. And tips, these are some of the tips that you can find useful for uh, taking pictures. Try to avoid post pictures like this one. Can scripted ba? You can script scripted, but you can actually siya pang blogger. No? Then try to capture emotions. Hanang candid emotions. And then get faces, not backs, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want, especially if you're um uh, taking pictures of events, then please do try to uh, include faces as well. And then who is the star of the picture? Show as much as possible the subject of your um, highlight, the subject as the center of interest of your photograph. Get up close, like in this one, if you see that the background is not really that important or unnecessary, then focus and close up such as this one. And let your pictures tell a story. That's the very most important thing. Especially if you are looking for, a, for an article to write and the first thing that you want to do is find a good picture first, then probably you might want to choose a, a picture or capture a, a scene that tells a story. Let your pictures tell a story like this one here. Use different angle levels. And for inanimate objects, this tends to be boring and always try to include people. So no pictures of building or cars. Don't just photograph a sculpture, photograph someone looking at the sculpture with an impressive look at his horror face. Especially if you're not actually doing a feature photograph, that's a very important to include people in the background like this one here. Uh, like duh, so, but this one here is much more interesting. Okay, if you compare this one, this one much me, but uh, this one would probably, the second one would probably tell a story better than the other. And then don't crowd a picture. Don't show too many subjects or too many center of attraction. If you want to show one, one tree with a light, then show one tree with a light. And action is exciting, but blurry is not. So if it's not, it's not gonna, it's not avoidable to take pictures like this. But probably try as much as possible if you're, especially if you're taking pictures of sports, then please aim at having action, but not make it blurry enough. Okay, then use the rule of thirds. So this is the rule of thirds, guys. So uh, always imagine that in your uh, in your lens or in your screen, there are um, this lines. This is called the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds would suggest where are you going to put the subject of your photograph. So in this case, nasa daring nga side ang imong subjects of photograph, okay? So the rule of thirds has actually nine boxes. It, it can be divided into four, four lines depending on the length of your length and width of your screen, like this one here. So you can just use uh, two lines like one, two, three. So the face of the subject is on the third space of your um, picture. And then try different things. Uh, for example, uh, let's go back a little bit to rule of thirds. It's very important as well if you are going to do long shot, long shot um, photographs. So it's very important to use the rule of thirds. And then we have here try different things like this one is scripted, but this one is more candid. Although scripted, siya, candid, siya tanawin. And then these are some of the good examples as well. This use rule of thirds. So if you have two or more subjects, then you can probably use half of the diagonal half of your entire picture, like this one. And this one too, 
this shows candid emotions. And for photo captioning, uh, let's end first our, uh, our first part of our lecture workshop because we only have two minutes left. I will end the Zoom meeting now and then please be back like after one or three seconds, okay? Okay, all right, so see you in a bit, guys.